Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Big day today. I want to do some more stuff with Create, but also we're actually very close to Vault Level 50, which is kind of the next big milestone when it comes to vaults. So I think I want to start off today's episode with a bit of a vault montage and run maybe, I don't know, maybe like three vaults. That should get us at or very close to level 50. Uh, and I did craft up some vault crystals and stuff. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to start with. Just because, you know, we do still need to be doing that. And also if we're going to be doing create, we're going to need a bunch of the vault gems and things like that. So... I think that makes the most sense. Uh, but as far as create stuff goes, uh, today I want to get into a setup that in, oh, that's the wrong button, that involves the crushing wheel. There's some really cool stuff you can do with this. Uh, create does give you the ability to, no, I don't think it doubles your ores, but it gives you more uh, per ore uh, than you would otherwise have. So, I want to take advantage of that. We're going to do a bit of a crushing wheel setup. I don't know if I want to set it up for ores or if I want to set it up to get us cobblestone, gravel, and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge once we come to it. First things first, vault montage. My friends, I hope you enjoyed that vault montage. We ran three vaults, killed a boss in the first one. Uh, honestly, all three vaults were pretty good. So this is what we got from our boss chest. Eh, not the best, mostly just vanilla stuff. Nothing super crazy. Uh, but we got a ton of different ores and things like that. Uh, we got some of these bits of vault gear. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, I did get a Pandora's box which gave us 44 vault bronze. Okay, that's something. Uh, got a bunch of statues, none of the, or, uh, these traders. None of these uh, really jump out at me. Quite a bit of star essence, which is good. That gets us close to another knowledge star. We got a bunch of these catalyst fragments since all the vaults I ran uh, did not have any modifiers applied to them before I went in. And uh, that's about it. We did get a bunch of vault gems, though, and I already fortuned down the, the basic stuff like the Beniatite and the, uh, the Laramar gems. Uh, but I figured we would do the rare gems together. So starting with Ashium, that gave us seven. 
four Bow McKnight, four Fun Suede. This is the big one right here. One, one Tubium. That's really the only one I wanted a bunch of. I've got, I've, okay. Well, we can now make one more Pog. Okay, all things considered, it could have been worse. I really would have liked to have gotten more Tubium gems, though. That was That's really our, uh, our big thing that we're missing right now when it comes to making more Pogs. And we need more Pogs for all sorts of things. So, yeah, like getting another Eternal. That would be great. Also, we did hit level 50, so yay. Uh, we now have seven unspent skill points. I think I definitely want to spend one of them on another level of speed. And then actually we could just save for another level of speed, which might be worth it. We would only need one skill point to do it. And then we would essentially have speed three at all times, which seems really good. Well, my friends, I have a plan and I think it's gonna be good. So first thing I need to do is craft up a bunch of things. I am going to need two of these crushing wheels, which thankfully are not uh, actually all that expensive. Well, I knew that I missed something. Uh, in order to set this up the way I want, we need brass funnels. And brass funnels require a Wutadai gem, mechanical belt, pretty easy, a electron tube, which actually is pretty easy, vault nugget, redstone torch, and polished rose quartz, which is just made... Uh, well, I'll show you the process for this, but it's not super difficult. But we also need brass. And the way that you get brass, uh, at least with our current level of technology, there's alt there's alternatives if you have, like, mechanism or thermal expansion or immersive engineering, but we don't have any of those. So what we actually have to do is mix it using copper and zinc over a blaze burner. And <laughs> that is what I don't have. So, uh... Easy enough, we should be able to do this. First things first, we gotta make empty blaze burners. There we go. And then what we actually have to do is go into the nether and right click on a blaze to essentially capture it in the blaze burner. And then it can be used to heat things. So yeah, I guess I'm going on a trip to the nether. You know, it seems like just yesterday we were working our way through the nether trying very hard not to get killed in the process and everything was terrifying and it was just super difficult. And now we're just going for like a nice leisurely stroll looking for a blaze spawner. Uh, and I know there's one. Aha. So you can uh, collect a blaze. You can also actually just grab them directly from the spawner if you don't feel like waiting for other blazes. So that's what we're gonna do. And we now have four blaze burners, which we can use for heating things up and all sorts of other stuff within Create. Now, while I'm here in the nether, I also need five buckets of lava for our project. And uh, I might as well get them here because it's the nether and it's easy to do. So I think I'm gonna do that too, and then I'll meet you back at the base. Okay, so a few more things we're going to have to craft. We need to make ourselves a basin, like so. And we're also gonna to need to make a mechanical mixer, which once again is going to be, I'll tell you what, I've actually crafted up an entire second stack, uh, stack of andesite alloy. Yep, still, still need more. <laughs> Just, Oh, we're going through so many of these things. It is it's a little ridiculous how quickly you go through these materials if you want to do anything with the actual mods in the mod pack. Oh, man. There we go. Okay, then we're going to need copper and we're going to need zinc, uh, which I think is, yeah, right here. There we go. I may actually need to go mining. Uh, but let's go and grab some of these. We don't need a ton. But we will need some. So let's do like, I don't know, eight of each. Okay, this should work. So I've got our blaze 
burner going here. We've got everything set up. Uh, now I should mention in create, in order for things to uh, go faster, you can use large cogwheels and small cogwheels. Uh, and same goes for making belts and things move slower. So if you go a large cogwheel into a small cogwheel, it will increase the speed. And if you go a small cogwheel into a large cogwheel, it will decrease the speed, uh, which can be really useful for certain things. Uh, there we go. So we'll toss this down. Now we should be able to turn off our magnet and toss these in. And you can see now it's actually mixing them. And this should make two brass ingots, which we can right click on the thing and get back. So that is how you make brass ingots. It's a little bit of a process, but uh, shouldn't, you know, we don't need tons and tons of these, at least not at the moment. So, um, you know, it's fine to do this a little bit right now. Okay, now that we've got our brass ingots, we need to create our brass funnels. So electron tubes are what we are going to need to do this. And in order to do that, we need polished rose quartz. Now, polished rose quartz is gotten by taking rose quartz, which is super easy. I should figure out how many funnels do I actually need? Four? Three. I need three of these brass funnels. So that means we need three electron tubes. So let's just grab a bunch of redstone and three pieces of quartz. And that makes our rose quartz. Next, we need to take this and turn it into polished rose quartz. And we do that with sandpaper, which, believe it or not, is made with just sand and paper. That, that, that's how you do it. So I don't know. Oh, OK. Yeah. So you can toss it down on the ground. And then if you hold down right click, well, uh, essentially aiming at it with the sandpaper. You can polish it just like so. So now we got our polished rose quartz and then that should basically be it. We need three redstone torches and three vault nuggets. So uh, I guess I need a little bit more redstone. There we go. My inventory is quickly getting out of control, but that's fine. And now we can make our brass funnels. So we need three Wutu Dai gems and uh, three belts, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're good. Okay. Brass funnels. One, two, three. That should be all we need. These are essentially like hoppers, kind of, except they can they can pick up and eject items, uh, but they work on conveyor belts. So they're you'll you'll see you'll see. Uh, well, no, no things. Well, oops. And they do it from chests. <laughs> Let me get this cleaned up. OK, step one is we need to bring some shafts out of the windmill because we're not going to have enough space in there and we need to speed them up. So what we have is big gear into small gear into big gear into small gear. Yes, I know this is in the ground right now. It's not a good look. Um, I'll make it look. This is not going to look pretty. You know what? I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> this is not going to be the prettiest thing I've ever built. Um, what happened to my magnet? I literally just had aha. Un magnet. Okay, we've got it. Good. Uh, all right. So I will clean this up later and make it look pretty at a later time, but today is not that day. So now that we've done that, we need to start making this go vertical. So we're going to put down a vertical gearbox. In fact, let's actually just put it here instead. Vertical gearbox. Okay. Then we're going to go up one, we're going to take another vertical gearbox and put it right there, like so. This is where our uh, crushing wheel is going to ultimately go. Uh, and then let's see if we go. Uh, 
with a gearbox. Oop, that's not where I wanted it to go. If we go with a gearbox here with a shaft and another gearbox, you can see these are now going in opposite directions. So now we can put down our crushing wheel and our crushing wheel and they will spin into each other like so. So that's great. Then we need another gearbox here and we need this guy to come out and we'll just go to like here. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to put a belt down. So once stuff is done being crushed, it will fall onto the belt and it will go this way where it will ultimately go into this chest and be collected by one of our fancy brass funnels. So everything that we put into here will ultimately end up right there. Now, next thing is we need a way to actually input stuff into this whole thing. So we're going to put a chute right there with a diamond chest on top of it. And a chute is pretty cool. It, it's basically like a hopper, except it just drops things. It, it's much faster than a hopper, but it also only works if you're trying to make stuff go straight down, which in this case we are. Also, you can shift on, uh, you can click it with the wrench and it'll look all fancy and stuff. So now, in theory, this should be a fully functional setup that will take any ores that we need processed and crush them into crushed ore. So uh, let's just put all of our create stuff into here. Uh, actually, let's take all of this stuff out and go like so, and then put all of our create stuff into here. And now if I go grab some ores and take a nap, we can take a look and see if this thing actually works. It should. I believe. I guess we'll find out. So let's sleep real quick. There we go. And then let's just go grab, I don't know, um, some iron ore and some gold ore and some lapis ore and some redstone ore. Sure. We'll just grab all the ores. Eventually I'll want to process literally all of the ores. Uh, but probably not right now. I also see a raid over there. Of course, that's fine. Uh, so let's just put all this stuff into here. And you can see it'll start kind of working its way through. It's actually going to do pretty much the full stack at a time, I believe. I don't think it only does one item at a time. Yeah, there we go. So in a few, in a few seconds, we've gotten all of this ore. And we got a little cobblestone as well. Uh, but because everything that we, because we want to keep everything that gets spit out of here, we can just have a basic funnel. We don't have to filter anything and we can just kind of let it run. So while this is doing its thing, we also want to set up a smeltery using Create. In Create, there are encased fans, which you can use to blow water lava, or just heat from fire over uh, items and do things to them. So, for example, if you have crushed zinc or crushed iron, which you which we will get from putting uh, we, we will get this from putting iron through, you can blast it through lava to turn those ingots in, uh, turn that ore into ingots. Or you can wash it, blasting a fan through water to have it turn into nuggets instead. Uh, and it will work basically the same way as a vanilla furnace, although it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a setup. Uh, it won't smelt everything that a vanilla furnace will smelt. Like it won't do uh, logs into charcoal, for example. But it'll do almost everything that a vanilla, serv uh, a vanilla furnace will smelt. And uh, also, it doesn't cost you anything fuel-wise once you have it set up. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, these things are awesome. Now, we got to figure out where in the world I'm actually going to set it up. I think 
think I'm going to just set it up right here. We'll just get rid of this little uh, farm area. This can be easily relocated elsewhere if I feel the need. But for now, let's just pick all this up. And I think this will be a good spot for the furnace. Let me just fill those in. Uh, the actual space we need is only, I believe, like seven by three, seven by four, something like that. It's really not bad. So let's just grab some stone bricks and start marking some stuff out. I think uh, this will be our back. And what we want to do is something like that. And then our back belt, I think, is going to go here. Uh, let's plop this guy down. There we go. Grab this. Grab you. Grab the fans. Grab the gearbox. Uh, don't need any cog wheels for this. I do need... Ooh, I actually need one more encased chain drive. Thankfully, they're not super expensive. Okay, so we can just make another one. Um... I should have a crafting bench in here, right? Yes. So let's just make one more of those. Okay. Now, there are many ways to get rotational force in Create, such as the windmill or the water wheel, but the simplest way... Uh, I Actually, I'd argue that the water wheel is simpler, but uh, the cheapest way is to actually use a magma block uh, and, an enca and an encased fan. Uh, which will generate a very, very, very small amount of rotational force. It's not a lot, but it is something. So let's go here, and we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five. And this is going to be the area that will actually be uh, used for our, like, furnace area thing. Then we need to take encased chain drives, and what these do is they allow you to have one, th like, shaft or whatever going in, and all of these will rotate the same way. So this one shaft will power all of these fans, rather than having to run a shaft into each one individually. So, very useful. Then, this is the fun part. We're going to go in here. We're going to put down a magma block. And then we will put the encased fan, oh, put down the magma block, put the encased fan, and we need the encased fan to face into the magma block. You can see there's kind of an arrow right here. That's what we want. So we'll do that. And then we're going to take just a vertical gearbox and go like so. Last, but certainly not least, we need a redstone uh, device of some sort. Uh, I think we want to use a lever. Is that a... No, that is not. I thought that was uh, another shaft from Create, and I was like, where did I get that, and why is it in there? Uh, anyway, we need a lever. And this lever has to go onto the fan... And then you can see these fans are now blowing. Now, uh, how much rotational force you put into a fan does not affect how quickly it will process items. What it does affect is how far the fan will blow these little particles. And that is actually very important. So we're going to do that. Now, we also need... I may need to revise this because I also need... Uh, let's see. You know what? We can do this. This will work. So we need a gearbox and a gearbox. And then one more encased drive. That should be spinning. No, it's not. Because uh, this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in case drive, how um, I may have to tweak this a little bit because we also need one shaft to go underneath for the belts. So 
Yeah. Uh, let me work with this just a little bit. Okay, I think we're good. So what I ended up doing was scooting this back a block, and then I have two encased chain drives here so that we can basically power this shaft. And then I also have an additional one here. And I know I could run this shaft directly through, but it would be sitting on top of lava and it wouldn't look good, so we're doing this instead. Okay, so this should all be good now. And then what we need to do is grab five iron trapdoors and just go one, two, three, four, five. And then grab our five buckets of lava. And, whoa, and fill that in. Okay, so now anything that goes along this belt will be subjected to this heat from the lava. And the nice thing about that is that it will smelt things. And it's not a very quick process. It's not like insanely fast or anything like that. But with the speed of the belt being powered by an encased fan, it will take exactly five encased fan blowers to smelt a full stack of items. So this is basically perfect. Uh, and then we'll put a brass funnel here and here. So now if I wanna do mass smelting of some sort, like for example, let's say we want to smelt a bunch of, I don't know, cobble into smooth stone or sand into glass or whatever, we can put those through. You see it will eject a stack of items. Once it gets in front of the lava, it will start kind of smoking. You'll see sort of the smoke particles like so, and it will slowly work its way along the belt, just kind of taking its time, having a nice little suntan, you know, getting baked or whatever. And once it reaches this point right here, the, like it'll just barely cross this line between those two blocks and boom, it is now smooth stone. And this will work for anything that, ne that can be smelted with this setup, which again, isn't absolutely everything that a vanilla fan can do. Uh, there are some things such as charcoal or uh, food that you can't cook this way, but just about everything else it'll work for. And it's an amazing way to save fuel resources and also just do like bulk smelting. If I want to smelt a whole bunch of that crushed ore and stuff at once, boom. This is, I just dump it all into this chest. It'll cycle through and it'll come out here and that's it. Taken care of. So, yeah, good stuff. We got a lot done today with Create, my friends. I think I am going to wrap up the episode there. I hope you enjoyed it. hope maybe you learned something about Create if it's a mod you're unfamiliar with. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.